Hello calculus students, let's do some test prep questions. Remember you're supposed to only be watching this after you've tried it all by yourself. So that's the assumption here is that you've been stuck on these problems. So go ahead and fast forward to the one that you need help with. Uh, this first one is going to be a calculator allowed problem. And when it talks about what is the average rate of change. Okay, so when you're saying the average rate of change, that is talking about the slope between two points on a graph. So here it's the average rate of the cost, right? So if ever, that's what I should clarify. When it says the average rate of C. Later on in the year, we're going to talk about some things that will probably get you mixed up with this. But for now, this is pretty basic. Um, this is just slope from point 0.1 to point 0.2. So we have 300 and 310. All that means is you're doing C of 310 minus C of 300 and then all over 310 minus 300. That's all you got to do. So you can use the calculator to help you figure that out, plug in the points, and you're good. Number two is quite a challenging problem that most kids struggle with. So don't feel bad if you're having a hard time with this one. Almost everybody does. So this is going to approach, if you, if you notice on all of these, we're approaching infinity and negative infinity. Infinity and negative infinity. Or else the answer is none of the above, which I hate it when they put this because that means you really do have to figure out if it's one of these answers. Uh, so what we're trying to do is figure out what happens as x approaches infinity, and then we'll try to figure out what happens as x approaches negative infinity. Well, f of x is the square root of x squared plus 1. This little plus 1 is nothing. I mean, when we're talking about going to infinity, this means nothing. So what's happening is that this is going to simplify down to just x, because we're doing, talking about the square root of x squared. So as you approach infinity, f of x is just approaching whatever x is. And as you approach negative infinity, f of x is approaching, now don't, oh, sorry. f of x is approaching not negative x. Okay, it's not negative x because you have to look at the original function. What were we plugging that negative huge number in? Negative infinity. Negative really, really big. You're squaring it, which makes it positive. Then you're taking the square root to go back to the number you put in, except that it would be positive. Okay, so that's what happens when you plug in a negative really big number. So let's see what happens here. As you approach infinity, we're, as x approaches infinity, what is f of x minus x. So as we approach infinity, this thing is just going to become x. Okay, so this, let me write this in red here. This is just going to be x, like that. And then as, you, as you're plugging in a really, really big number, it's just going to be subtracting that same really big number. So that is true. It equals zero. Now let's look at this one. So x as we approach negative infinity, now this is a little different. As you approach negative infinity, f of x is approaching x. So it's going to be like this. But as you approach negative infinity, x is approaching a really big negative number. So this is minus a really big negative number, the same negative number here. So again, that little x here is becoming the really big negative version of whatever that is. So we are going to end up adding it. That doesn't work. Okay, so that's why, if we look down here, this is why the answer is C. Because we already showed that this first piece works. You're gonna, when you plug in f, a really big number, you square it and take the square root of it. So we'll just call that x. And then we subtract the same exact number. Okay, so that's going to equal 0. Now here, as you approach negative infinity, you plug in a really, really big negative number and square it and take the square root, and it just goes right back to whatever that really big number was. Plus, okay, now we're plugging in that same really big number just into the, this x. So it's going to be that same as this but negative. Okay, that is pretty confusing thing. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, it's one of the harder ones on this packet. Number three, we're going to use a graph. What's the average rate of change from the interval 0 to 5? Average rate of change of g. So if this is g, and which it is, this is the graph g. I probably should have had that on here somewhere that this is g of t. If we're just talking about the average rate of change, that means we are doing slope. Okay, so we're going to say g of 5 minus g of 0, and then that's all over 5 minus 0. Okay, so that's all this is. So you got to set that up, figure out what g of 5 is, subtract g of 0, it's all over 5. And then that is, why is this per day per day thing? Because 
This is the y value, and we're taking a rate of change of that. So we're doing a rate of change of this. So it's that per day. That's why all of these say centimeters per day per day, centimeters per day per day. Number four, which of the following functions has a vertical asymptote at x equals four? The important part of this is if you have a vertical asymptote at x equals four, that means the denominator contains a factor of x minus four. That is the most important thing to pick up from that statement. Vertical asymptotes will lead us to having some type of that same factor representing that it could be that zero on bottom. So we just have to look at these and know which one of these has a factor of x minus four. This has x squared minus four, it's close, but when you factor that, it's x minus two times x plus four, x plus two. Now this one has an x minus, so, oh, so it cannot be this one. That, that one's definitely not right. It could be this one. This looks pretty good because you have an x minus four on bottom, which is exactly what I said, except that if you factor the numerator, you get an x minus four times an x minus, excuse me, an x plus four. So that means when that cancels, you no longer have an x minus four on bottom. That's, that's still a discontinuity, but it's a whole. It's not a vertical asymptote. This one has an x plus one, so it's not that one. So it's either none of these or this one. So if you factor this, you should be able to see that this is going to factor out and give you an x minus three and an x minus four. That's where it comes from, and that's why that d is the answer. Last one, number five. So you've got all this information going on here. It is important to kind of read through this and at least have an understanding of what's happening. But what I'm gonna look at here is during which of the following 10 minute intervals, so 10 minute intervals, is the average rate of gasoline during, excuse me, not during, is the average rate of gasoline draining from the tank the least? Okay, so when is the average rate draining from the tank the least? So average rate that's draining. So what is this? Let's make sure we understand exactly what it's saying. Allow the gasoline to burn out of the tank to be empty exactly four minutes below the table, which gives the volume. V is the volume. Okay, that's good. I was afraid V might be like some type of rate or something, but it's not. It's just the volume. So this is how much is in it, and it's losing this much every five minutes, and it shows you the amount. So we're looking for 10 minute spans. So from zero to 10 minutes. So from zero to 10 minutes, since these are all just 10 minute intervals, it's really easy to just look at these y values. In those 10 minutes, that loses what, 1500? So I'm just gonna write that down and keep track of it, 1500, right there. And then from 10 minutes to 20 minutes, what is it going? From 10 to 20, it's losing 1200, all right. It's losing 1200 liters in that 10 minute span. 15 to 25, 15 to 25, it's losing 1000 liters. 25 to 35, it's losing, it looks like 1,400 to 500, 900 liters. And the last one, 30 to 40, so we're going 800 to zero, it loses 800 liters. So then we just look back, what was the question asking again? During which of the time intervals was it losing the least? It's at the very end, from 30 to 40 minutes, it was only losing 800 liters. So I know that the rate of change would just be 800 divided by 10, so it's actually 80 whatever this is, liters per minute, right? Yeah, liters per minute. But we don't need to know, write all that out. We just needed to know which 10 minute interval was the least. All right, that's it. Good luck on that mastery check.